you can start small to get huge momentum. I'm very excited to talk to you today about the compound effect that has changed my life. The compound effect is a very powerful principle that simply means doing something with consistency a little bit at a time can lead to significant, often life-changing results. The key to understanding the compound effect is to recognize that success often doesn't come from one single monumental effort, but instead it's the cumulative impact of a lot of small actions, decisions, and habits formed over time. You can apply this to your personal life, your finances, and to business. If you're new to the channel, my name is Arlen. I have invested in more than 200 companies, raised more than $30 million, and generated millions of dollars. And just 10 years ago, I was homeless. So I've gone from that to this, and I want to help you make your first million. I always start with, how can we get you to your first 100000 So today we're going to talk about how the compound effect applies to business. The first way to think about this is in your networking. In both of my books, It's About Damn Time and Your First Million, I talk about the power of building your network. I started building my network when I was poor, broke, homeless, and it has really helped me over the years to have that network foundation. What if you spent 15 to 20 minutes per day on LinkedIn, leaving comments, posting and liking things and just getting to know very specific people over time, just 15 minutes a day over time, what that would turn into is hours and hours and hours of work. These will help you build valuable connections. You help you collaborate and help you close deals. This will in turn help you generate money. And of course, it's not all about money. It's about relationships and people and a higher quality of life. All of that can be achieved by these small daily habits that you have. Each interaction builds upon the last and so on and so forth. On something like LinkedIn, that would help you build your influence and your network. It might even help you become considered an expert in your field or a person of influence. Another way to think about this in business is to think about the internal processes you have at your company. Even if it's a smaller company, what if you dedicated yourself to every single day, I'm going to do something 1% better. I'm going to think about or strategize or learn something a little bit more so I can stack my skills. I'm also going to expect that and ask that of my employees and my staff. Over time, you could see how this would balloon into the most amazing results because you have put in your reps little by little. Speaking of reps, that's a great way to think about the compound effect. If you start out by lifting weights and you start with five pounds and you do that for several days and then you move up to eight pounds and do that for several days and you move up and you keep going up, over time, you will be able to pick up heavier and heavier weights. It's just the way it works. So you can apply this to almost anything in your business. You can get better and better and better. Another way to think about it in business is building this library of content for yourself. So I'm on YouTube. I've had a great time being on YouTube and thousands of people discover me every single day now on YouTube. But when I first started, I only had a few views per day, if that. And when I started, I only had a few subscribers per week. Today, I get thousands and thousands of subscribers per week. And every day, I have more than a thousand people subscribe to my YouTube channel. That number may even grow to be more because of the compound effect. When you're doing this every single day, you don't really see all of the change happen at once. It can actually get discouraging because you're not seeing a big change or big result. But one day you look up and you have 50,000 subscribers. One day you look up and you have a thousand people subscribing per day. I've had a week recently where I had 100,000 new people discover me on YouTube in that one seven day period. That could not have happened if I didn't start at the beginning and really strategize and say, okay, I'm going to release a video no matter how few people watch it. And I'm going to do that every single week. 
until I see some results. And then that turned into, I'm going to do that every single day until I see some bigger results. And now we're here and who knows where it will go next. So depending on when you see this, 50,000 subscribers may seem small because this is when it gets really good. If I were to stop right now, the compound effect would lose all of its luster. So you keep going. And let me tell you, this is where a lot of people go wrong. I've met with thousands of entrepreneurs and investors, and so many people stop right before the compound effect starts to really work because they're not seeing these big results. They're getting discouraged. They stop right at the wrong time, just too soon, and they miss out on all the good. So imagine if for the last eight months I said, oh, this sucks. I'm only getting a few views and a few subscribers per day. I want to reach 100,000 subscribers and I'm not anywhere close to it. I'm going to stop in month seven. It's just too much. If I had stopped a month ago, just a month ago, I would have missed out on half of my subscribers that I have today. So Definitely think about that with anything that is taking a long time. Things can take years. Remember, I was 34 before I got out of being homeless and being broke. And if I had stopped right then when I was at the airport, sleeping on the floor of the San Francisco airport, had no idea what was going to happen next. But I knew that I had a dream and I had a purpose and I was going to keep going. If I had stopped, which I could have, I would not have had all of the success that I've had since then. Almost 80% of my life was the part where I couldn't see the traction. And the 20%, the last few years, has been where everything has really started to show out. So if you're interested in starting on YouTube, you should know that when you film a video on YouTube, the wonderful thing about it is it goes into your archive. It goes into your library of content. And so it's not just fleeting. It's not just you do it once and you never really think about it again. It means that this very video could be seen by someone years from now and still have the same effect or even more and help them in years. So when you're thinking about starting your YouTube channel or taking it more seriously, Seriously, think about that legacy you're leaving behind. Think about that archive and that library of content, whether it's entertainment, education, or something else. If you're interested in learning more about YouTube and how I'm building my YouTube channel and how I'm thinking about it, I have Arlen's All Access, which is my membership that you can join. And one of the main topics is YouTube. We're having a really good time and there. A few hundred of us are learning all about YouTube and watching behind the scenes, all of the things that are happening and things that I'm doing to have more than a thousand subscribers every single day. You can join by clicking on the link in the description below. Another thing in business that has the compound effect is your reputation. That's what's really fun too. So as long as you're consistent, you don't have to be great at things. You don't have to be perfect for sure. But as, as long as you're consistent and you treat people well, and you have a reason and you're connected to your why, you're aligned with your why, people are going to see that. They're going to notice that. And over time, people are going to talk about you to each other. And that's just going to grow and grow and grow. And sometimes you'll do things for people. And if you don't worry about getting something back that moment or at all, you'll get it back from the universe. You'll get it back somewhere. I've seen that happen time and time again. So what do you do now? What do you do next? Think about the compound effect when it comes to your daily habits and things that you want to do for personal growth. And then think about it when it comes to your mindset. So what I mean by that is one thing you could do is you could say, I'm going to read for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes every single day. I'm going to read from a book, from the same book until I finish it. And that book is going to be about something that I want to accomplish. I like to read biographies of people in business and in entertainment that kind of inspire me and teach me. I also like to read business books in general. So you could say to yourself, I will read or listen to or whatever the case may be for this number of minutes every single day. And before you know it, let's say you do that for 15 minutes and let's say it's a six hour audible. Well, that's 24 days. That's less than a month. If you were to just listen to one book on Audible for 15 minutes for every day, that's just less than a month. So conceivably, you could read 12 books a year. Most people don't read 12 books a year. 
If you were to read 12 books a year, you would have so much information and you would grow as a human being. You really would. And that's just one example. Another thing you could do with your mindset habits could be, you could say each morning when I wake up, I have this routine. I'm going to add to that routine some daily affirmations or some daily thing that I say to myself that makes me inspired. Or you could simply say, I'm going to focus on the positive. I'm going to focus on gratitude. I'm going to say thank you when I wake up. That's been one that I've tried before for several weeks where I just say I'm grateful. Whether you're spiritual or not, these type of things can really help with your mindset and your mindset is really what helps fuel what happens during your day. So it's patience and consistency. Those are the main takeaways I want you to have. Patience and consistency can really pay off. And when you do these small things like filming a video for YouTube or uploading the video or completing a task, starting on something that's an email that's been sitting there for forever and you're finally getting around to it. When you do these small incremental things that will over time turn into big results, you have to celebrate that. You don't have to tell anybody else or involve anyone else and have them give you their opinion of what you've just done. For yourself, you celebrate those small incremental wins because it'll be a motivator for you to keep going. Again, some people and most people stop right when it's going to get good. So if you can motivate yourself by celebrating, hey, I did this thing. I got out of bed. I did my to-do list. I did one thing on my to-do list. I made myself a meal. Sometimes it's as simple as that. When you have that or when you do something at work that you're proud of and no one else is celebrating, celebrate yourself. When you do something in your own company and there's no one else to hear about it, celebrate that. Don't wait for the big transaction to happen, for the big partnership to happen. Do it when you order the right amount of paper for your printer. <laughs> I promise you those types of things will help you stay motivated enough to get to the good part.